ADH back again. We there. We are going to react because we can, right? We can react. So that's what we are going to do. So today we got craziest interrogation moments of all time. Very interested. Let's go. <clears throat> Interrogation rooms hold some of the most horrifying, saddening, and life-changing moments in history. So here are some of the craziest interrogation moments of all time. Oh, no. <laughs> Starting out with Thomas Robinson, a 27-year-old facing life in prison after shooting a 17-year-old boy. But Thomas wasn't going down easily. In fact, he was determined to make the cops' life as difficult as he could in the most dangerous ways imaginable. As the policeman moves to handcuff him, Thomas leans over and glances at the holster on the cop's waist, where he gets an idea that could end in death for him and the officer. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. You couldn't get it. Thomas made a leap for the cop's gun, but due to safety features built into the holster, he wasn't able to get it out. After a short struggle, two more cops entered the room with tasers to subdue him, and he was eventually restrained without further issue. This obviously just looks like a case where the suspect wanted to escape and was prepared to do so by any means necessary. <laughs> but take another listen to what he's saying as he's fighting with the cops. <laughs> If he was really trying to escape, it's unlikely he'd be repeating the words kill me from the get-go. Instead, it's possible that Thomas was so terrified of his sentence and the position he was in that he made the radical move to scare the officers in hopes that they'd shoot him and spare him from what's to come. Bringing a firearm into an interrogation room is an incredibly foolish idea, and the majority of police departments forbid it for the safety of the detectives. But it seems this Las Vegas police department also forgot about that rule and come incredibly close to seeing the consequences. This man convicted of killing a two-year-old boy actually managed to retrieve the gun from the detective's holster. Life in prison, please and thank you. A two-year-old boy. Bruh, this, that kid been on the earth for... I want you guys to look at how long you would have been on the earth for, right? And then think of just being on the earth for just two years. Like, like last year, the year before last, you weren't even, a, a, you were just a couple months old. Like, literally, like, you're fresh, freshly new to the world. Two years on Earth is super young, but, and <laughs> literally, like, think about how old Earth is. Like, she's our, she's everyone's grandmother. Great, 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 great. Two years on it, life in prison resulting in a mad scramble to get it back off him. It took three separate officers and multiple punches to the head to reclaim the firearm. Somehow, nobody was hurt, but Ryan Waller wasn't so lucky, as his story ends in a truly horrifying way after he was brought in for interrogation with a bullet still stuck in his head. You're telling me they shot you with a revolver in your eye? Yes. Is it a BB gun? No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a revolver. If they shot you in the eye, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. It was most likely you'd be dead. But little did police officers know, he was actually telling the truth. As while 18-year-old Ryan was being mocked by detectives, he was suffering from a gunshot to the head and experiencing a brain bleed that could end his life at any moment. I'm gonna go back to sleep and try to go back to bed. You're not going back to bed. On the 23rd of December 2006, two men broke into Ryan Waller's house looking for revenge for a past argument. Ryan heard the noise at the door, but when he went to investigate, a hand reached inside and shot him twice in the eye. The two men, Richie and Larry Carver, then entered his house and shot Ryan's girlfriend, Heather, killing her instantly. By some miracle, 18-year-old Ryan survived and was able to talk to police when they arrived hours later. Given he He'd just been shot in the
on the head. He told them he had no idea what happened, but instead of being taken straight to the hospital, he was taken to the police station and interrogated for the longest hour of his life. Before the interview started, Ryan was left in the room alone. He squirmed in pain for 20 minutes straight, and worse yet, he was handcuffed to the desk and unable to scream for help. Mm. Yeah. Ryan is obviously For not some okay. Reason, my body feel uncomfortable just thinking about being in so much pain and being trapped in a little room and being handcuffed to a confined area. I don't know. I maybe there's claustrophobic. Maybe I, I'm feeling claustrophobic. Just I don't know, but I feel bro. This gotta bro, 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 bro. Hey, but the detectives begin the interrogation anyway. You know why you're down here, Ryan? You have no idea why you're down here? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what happened, okay? So I'm going to read you something to make sure you understand your rights, okay? Okay, you have your right to remain silent. Make why am I smart? I feel stressed. Because I know I, we just learned what is going on with him, right? But for some reason, I just feel so stressed for him. Like, he's in pain, and then he's got to listen to these interrogations. These, the, the, like, oh, you got the rights to do this, rights to do that. And then we're going to ask some questions. Bro, interrogations be taking long as hell. Until, if the suspect be like, I want a lawyer, shut up, don't talk to me. Until Mr. Lawyer is here. <laughs> you feel me? But otherwise from that, it be so long. Because they're trying to get every little details. They can't be used against you in a court of law. What's the um, highest grade you went through school? Yeah. Um, that's why I hate the police because they're trying to be. That's the first thing with their in, um, interrogation. They always try to come up with this friendly approach. So they ask basic questions like, "Where did you grow up? What school did you go to?" Like they try, they try to get you comfortable and to see, let them know that oh, we can have just normal conversations, just to get down to business. That's the type of point. They want. They basically, they're trying. They're going for a background check, even though they know your background already. You feel me? Like this guy is stressing me out because I know this guy is in pain. You say it can't be used against you in a court of law. What's the um, highest grade you went through school? I don't know. I just want to go home. Oh, you're you're not gonna go home right now. What's the highest grade that you completed? B. Not, not grade, as in letter grade. I'm asking, did you graduate high school? No. Do you know how to read and write? What right? does his girlfriend getting shot in the head has to do with him graduating high school? But that's what pisses me off about interrogating, bro. Yeah. The way the detective is talking to Ryan implies that he knows something is wrong. He's raising his voice slightly, slowing down, and talking in very simplified language just as you would a child. Yet even with the massive red mark around Ryan's face and the dazed responses he's giving, the detective still decides that nothing is wrong and continues questioning him. Do you have a girlfriend? Mm. Mm. No? You know, you know a girl named Heather? Um, the one that lives there right now? I guess, I don't know. If her name's Heather, what's her last name? I don't know which name she's trying to use as her last one. She's trying to have a real last as her nickname, so I don't know. What nickname does she go by? She probably wants the last name, Kyman. Kyman? How old is Heather? 16 or 17. What happened to your face? I don't know. You told the officer just a few minutes ago that someone hit you. Do you remember who hit you? I think it was Heather. Why would Heather hit you? It was an accident. I forgot why. What was an accident? Heather's last name? No. Bro, you can tell this guy's messed because he's... He don't even know what he's talking about at this point. Like, the... The bullet is doing damage to his brain currently. What was an accident? 
how they're hitting me. What happened for her to hit you in the eye like that? She just hit me in an accident. She was giving Christina a head. She was what? She was helping Christina with her hair or something. I don't know. Who's Christina? She's on the couch. Christina's on the couch? Ryan and Heather lived with another person whose name isn't public. There's a possibility that it's the Christina he's referring to here, but either way, nobody else was home at any point of the night of the attack. Ryan is clearly suffering traumatic yeah. brain injury, and it's astonishing that the detective isn't connecting the dots. Even if it was just blunt force like Ryan is telling him, he still should be checked out by a doctor given how he's acting. But of course, that's not how it happens. Instead, it somehow gets even more messed up. What happened last night? I don't know. You don't know? I really don't. I just want to go to sleep and go to sleep. Who was in the house when you went to sleep? Christina and Heather. Christina and Heather? Mm -hmm. And Christina was on the couch? Heather was. Heather was on the couch. You told me Christina was on the couch just a minute ago. I don't know, man. I really don't. I really don't. I just want to go and go to sleep, man. Oh, Ryan, you're not going to go anywhere. You know what happened in your house last night? Mm-mm. Uh -uh. What happened? I don't know what happened. You're all beat up. So tell me what happened. I don't know. I just want to go to sleep, man. There's a dead girl in your living room. She's dead? Yes. Heather? The girl on the couch is dead? I don't know. If she's on the couch, she's dead. Well, these people came over, Richie and his dad, with shooting arrow bow and darts. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They hit me and her with those. That's it. And Heather wasn't there. And Eric wasn't there. It was just me and Heather. And then what happened? And that's it. Richie and his dad tried to break in in the back. This man Richie got memory dead. loss. His dad? Mm hmm. Who's Richie? I don't know. Well, you obviously know him. You know his name by Richie. The there. fact that the human brain. Bro, 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 bro. Like something traumatic happened to this man to the point that he doesn't remember. Also, a bullet. Did they say it two times? I forgot he said they shot him two times in the eye. So is it a one bullet or two bullet? What in Jesus' name? Was he a roommate of yours? He used to be. They hit you? Yeah. Now it's Richie that hit you, not Heather? No, Richie and his dad. Why? Because they were trying to get their stuff. I don't know why. And they had some kind of bow and arrows? They each had two revolvers and they didn't let off any shells. Okay, you just said they had bow and arrows. Now they have revolvers? That's what I meant. They have revolvers. They have revolvers? Yes. And then what happened? And then they shot us with those. They shot both of you? Yeah. Where'd they shoot you at? I got shot in the eye. You I got think. shot in the eye? I think so. With a revolver? I think. I don't know, man. I don't know. Then what happened? I don't know. You don't know a lot. Ryan? I don't, man. I really don't. I'd like to see this detective try and articulate himself anywhere near as Ryan is in this situation. He's managed to recount the exact sequence of events as well as the perpetrator's names with the revolver bullet still in his brain. It does sound like an unbelievable story, and that's probably why the cop is essentially laughing at him by now. But that still doesn't excuse any part of what's going on. He's obviously distressed, in pain, and needs to go to the hospital. But he's still more than half an hour away from any form of salvation. Ryan, why don't you tell me what really happened there? Because I don't believe... I really don't know, man. I really don't. I don't know. I can tell you anything, I swear. Well, I want you to tell me the truth. That's all I want. Richie and his dad came there. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they put me in sleeping hold. And, like, they put me in sleeping hold with the arrows and shit. Like, I lived through the sh that crap. You're, you're all over the board here, number one. You're saying bows and arrows. You're saying revolvers. And you're saying some other thing. And they, you're saying they shot you in the eye. Okay? They shot you with a revolver in your eye. Yes. And that's Is it. Is it a BB gun? No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a but revolver. They shot you in the eye. 
with a revolver, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. It was most likely you'd be dead. That's what I thought too, man. I really don't know. I really don't I guess I do kind of understand the, 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 um, the detective part. But at the same time, this guy is showing so many signs. Signs that the detective could be like, oh, this is, these are suspicious. He's being like, because normally innocent people just sit there and, but he's being very, he's moving a lot. But at the same time, as the, the narrator said, he's in pain. He's distressed. Like, he, he himself doesn't even know that he, he, he is supposed to go to the hospital because of the damage being done to his brain. Like, all he's saying is he wants some sleep. That's sign of, if he goes to sleep, he probably won't wake up. But that's, <laughs> bro, this is crazy. Crazy, crazy. No, crazy. I just want to go back to sleep. And hey, try hey, to... Yeah. You're not going back to bed, okay? That's not going to happen. What happened to Heather? Heather got shot. Where did she get shot? Inside the face once. She got shot inside of the face? Mm hmm How close were you to her when she got shot in the face? It was after I got shot, so I didn't even hear anything. So you got shot first? Mm hmm And what happened? Did you call 911? Mm hmm Did you see if she was alive? She was sleeping still, and that's it. I just let her sleep. She got shot in the side of the face, and you let her sleep? Yes. This does not make sense, Ryan. I know I didn't mean to, man. I'm sorry. I didn't know she was passing out. That's because I got shot wrong once, too, and I was going to pass out. Okay, this is now, not before. You're saying right now you've been shot? Yes. In the eye? Yes. With the revolver? Yes. All right. Ryan, you need to start telling me the truth because your story doesn't make sense. I'm trying, man. I don't know. What happened with you and Heather last night? Bro, what the... I just want to find out when he goes to the hospital. Like, what in G... I'm stressed. But why is this interview so long? Her dad came and shot the house. And shot her. Mm-hmm. Her dad shot her. Mm-hmm. All right. And then leaves. Mm-hmm. And what did you do? I tried to go back to sleep. After you've been shot? Mm-hmm. In the eye? Mm-hmm. You didn't know enough to call 911? Mm-mm. Ryan, look at me. Ryan. Yes. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Why did you shoot Heather, Ryan? I didn't shoot Heather. She was already shot once by her brother, I swear. Richie. Yes. Richie shot his own sister. Yes, I swear. That's it. So that not me. And you've been shot in the eye. Yes. Put your put your legs put your legs down. Put your legs down. Bring, bring your face closer. Oh, my head hurts. Okay. Yeah, be be right back. Finally, the detective at least considers the fact that Ryan might be in some form of physical distress. He leaves the room to ask for an ambulance and returns momentarily to try and get a few more details about the shooting. Ryan clarifies that Heather isn't related to Richie or his dad, and that he's got no idea why they attacked him that evening. Ten minutes later, the fire department arrives to take a look at Ryan's injury. As acting uh, like he has a serious head injury, which would make sense. But you guys confirm Ryan. Yeah, no, we'll take him. I don't know why. Well, we can like tell. Whatever. It done all. Has it been like that before, or just happened tonight? I think just for like a day or so. I wonder so it happened, what, the other night? I don't know. You don't know what happened? Were there guns around? This kid Eric did it. I don't know how he did it exactly. I might have been shot, I don't know. Ryan gets his blood pressure taken, and finally, after 56 minutes of unnecessary and ultimately <laughs> deadly interrogation, he's taken to the hospital. Upon inspection at the hospital, doctors immediately realized his status was critical and that he also had indeed been shot in the eye. They also told his father that he'd contracted an infection that could have been prevented had he received proper care. Ryan stayed at the hospital for 35 days, 
and lost part of his brain and his left eye. Worst of all though, he experienced regular seizures from the day he left the hospital until 2016 when one finally took his life. Richie and Larry were both given life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ryan's father also sued the police department, but as is so often the case, he only received a fraction of the punishment, less than three years in prison. Many people believe this officer should be charged with assault and possibly even murder. I don't think so because I guess any normal person would think if you get shot in the eye, that's where the, that's very, 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 very close to the brain. So you're going to die. You are going to die. But I don't want to pick up for the detectives because... You should, I don't, I, 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 He only received a fraction of the punishment, less than three years in prison. Many people believe this officer should be charged with assault and possibly even murder, and that three years is absolutely not enough, especially compared to cases like Reed Durant, who's facing up to 30 years in prison after attacking a cop. Reed was arrested at an elementary school after he was seen pretending to be the father of a kindergartner. Wow. He was seen to be acting Life. strangely around the kids and Throw failed to correctly Throw name any of the children guy. there. So he was arrested and taken pretending to be the father of a kindergartner. Reed was seen to be acting strangely around the kids and failed to correctly name any of the children there. So he was arrested and taken to the police station. In the interrogation, Reed freely told officers that he intended to lure one of the children out, feed them candy laced with tranquilizers, then abduct them while they were unconscious. I what? don't even want you to have a life in prison. This nigga deserved the cheer immediately. I, I, I mean that. The cheer. Electrocute the fuck out this nigga. I'm, pardon my language. But after what seemed like an easy interrogation, Reed suddenly decided that the detective had heard enough and made a bid for his escape. Oh. Me right now? Reed had picked up a pen and attempted to stab the officer with it, but the officer's reflexes and composure helped him to instantly take him down and restrain him. That and the fact that the pen isn't the most effective weapon. Either way, Reed was arrested and charged with attempted kidnapping and now a felony count of assault. He's currently awaiting trial and facing up to 30 years in prison. Uh... Reed's escape obviously didn't end very well for him. But the story is different for Quantrell Schwarzlow, who managed to escape the cops Schwarzlow. faster than anyone in history. Wait, what? Schwarzlow, who oh, managed oh, to I escape the cops faster than anyone in history. I saw this. Damn it. Quantrell was brought in for strangling a girl and assaulting her, a crime he clearly didn't want to be convicted of. Unfortunately for Quantrell, his handcuffs were a dead giveaway, and he was captured four hours later. While it's unknown exactly what happens to Quantrell after, this clip will forever put him in the Interrogation Hall of Fame. However, Ricky Hawthorne took a much more straightforward approach to ending his interrogation, managing to confess in record time. Ricky was found covered in blood near the bodies of Lara Kuchar and Tommy Skeens. Lara had clearly been assaulted. Ricky's DNA was also found at the scene, so police had no worries when bringing him in. Surprisingly though, Ricky would make it even easier for them. Hey, hey, come on in. Hey, yes sir. Yeah, I did. I did. You know what, let's do this. I did, but I think somebody came behind me and finished it. Okay. Yeah, I did. So much for staying silent. However, Ricky is alleging that he wasn't actually the murderer. He just attacked the couple and assaulted Laura. It was someone else that finished the job. Even though the evidence was stacked against him, he still would have had a better chance of getting away with it if he just stayed silent. There's three more people. I don't know. And you know what? They was living when I left. 
But I think somebody came in behind me and finished them off. I did beat the shit out of him. But <laughs> yeah, somebody else. I, don't, I left. Despite his claims, it was determined that the couple died of the injuries inflicted by Ricky, and he was later found guilty of the first and second degree murder, as well as the attack on Laura. That's crazy. There are only but the detectives do that on purpose by leaving you in the room by yourself so you can be within your own thoughts and guilt. And that's what happened. He was... He was breaking it. Like, he had to confess immediately. Shout out to this video. It was very entertaining, bro. And rest in peace, my guy, Ryan, man. Rest in peace, bro. Rest in peace. I'll see y'all. Peace.